general requirements. This is another interesting one for particularly the Schedule 2s, 3Bs, and 3Ds, um, because you've never had to comply with bit committees. Now, the general requirements section, the first um, couple of sections of it all refers to bit committees. The AA of all institutions must ensure that the SEM system provides for the establishment, composition, and functioning of bid specification, evaluation, and adjudication committees and the selection of bid committee members. Procurement through a bidding process is subject to the bid committee system envisaged in paragraph A, and bid committee members are duly appointed and a quorum is determined for each committee. So those that did not have to include bid committees um, under 16A now have to include bid committees. The details around this is not described here or anywhere else in this instruction. 8.2 goes on and says, and this is new, if considered necessary, one or more independent expert may be co-opted to a bid evaluation committee in an advisory capacity, evaluation and adjudication committee, in an advisory capacity, the expert does not have voting rights and is subject to the same conflict of interest declaration disclosures applicable to bid committee members. So this is included in the draft public procurement bill and uh, they've brought this through now into this particular instruction. A representative of the relevant treasury may attend bid committee members meetings of any institution in an observer capacity and must inform the relevant AOAA when he or she will be attending. The representative does not have voting rights and is subject to the same conflict of interest declaration disclosure people to bid committee members. Um, and that's really the three sections then on bid committees. 8.4 then is, is general may not invite price quotations or bids if no or insufficient provision has been made in the budget, must ensure that cash flow is sufficient to meet contractual obligations, must pay supplies within 30 days of receipt of invoice, receipt of invoice or the period provided for in the contract and may not place orders with supplies or goods or services to be received in the current financial year and arrange that the supplies be invoice and payment to be made in the next financial year, except in the case of a multi-year contract. Uh, those would be general. The very last section then, uh, 9 and 10, is all around the register of complaints and allegations. Um, I'm not going to go through that in any detail. Uh, they talk about the register. They have included the register in Annex, Annex B. Um, the CFO of the institution must report uh, a complaint allegation of abuse in the SEM system that implicates the accounting officer or accounting authority any relevant treasury within 14 days. I think this is the same as what we've got in the current one, um, that the CFO must actually report if somebody in the board is, is um, potentially complicit in something. And then the investigation must, um, must take place. And I think this is fairly similar to what we've got previously, the 60 days and the 30 days. Um, and then there is also that if the, um, if it is the, somebody on the board as well, then I think that is something that comes through. If the institution receives a complaint delegated and implicates a board member, then during the investigation, the CFO must submit the complaint to the relevant treasury with all the evidence for investigation. The treasury will then investigate. Um, there are a number of other things that come through as well, which put obligations on the treasury, relevant treasury as well, Sanele, um, on what must be done and reported through to parliament and AGSA on uh, these complaints and, uh, and allegations. So um, that's, that's it. That is instruction number three of 2021-22, applicable on Friday, the 1st of April. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. Uh, this was issued on the Thursday, although it was only put on the website uh, late on Monday, um, uh, it was sent by email on Friday the 31st. Go ahead, Ron. Um, Sean, just so you didn't ask us to comment on those sections you've just gone through, but uh, just 8.2. Thank you, we will do that now. Go ahead. Uh, just 8.2, maybe just go to it, Sean. Um, during the consultation, we highlighted that, um, that this particular uh, rule 
you know, it cannot be used for certain types of procurement. And I know I'm sounding like a stuck record, but when you do competitive dialogue, uh, independent juries are the best mm. practice. Mm. You do not use your internal staff, etc., mm. for that. You, you do use that. The other one, uh, and these are just two examples, which is also permitted in terms of that South African National Senate, are design contests. Mm. They use independent juries. They make the final decision. Mm. Um, so, you know, again, it's just restricting innovation because mm. maybe national juries just don't understand, you know, what creates, uh, you know, economic growth and what, what really, you know, the need for innovation. And, and when, you, when you're buying something that doesn't exist, you have to use different processes. Um, thanks, Sean. Thanks, good one, Ron. Yeah, I was thinking through those design contests as well. That's, um, any, any other comments on the bid committee section, the bid committees, the general comments, uh, the register complaints and allegations, the investigation of that? Any other comments? Hey, Sonelia, go ahead. And just, just to um, uh, add on what Ron is saying, but I recall we had uh, one of the well-qualified well, well guys was presenting a thesis in this forum for procurement of innovation. I'm not sure whether uh, I, I still recall correctly of the name. And what Ron is saying is I like what the guy said. And not, you still remember that guy, sure. I, so I do, I do, the Wazi. Mm. Yes, 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 was because he actually shared very uh, interesting sentiment that he, in the country there's nothing that permits the procurement of innovation. And I think now, as the current structure of legislation exists, it, has, it proves the fact that there's nothing that speaks to that. So I'm not sure if we can also uh, try to exploit the existing space to try and, and, and push uh, some sort of dialogue around the space on, 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 on procurement of innovation. Obviously, uh, guys like Ron will leave that because, of, because they, they are the ones that are frustrated by this current legislation. Because um, if you look at the, the current construction and, and how it is structured, it definitely does not serve purpose and I mean some other institution and mm. if, if you would force this people this uh, red tables and down into their throat it means they just need to be redundant and not function properly. So I'm not sure if uh, Ron would have the appetite to try and pursue it, uh, try to uh, elevate the discussion to the relevant uh, audience because we do need to have uh, a platform where we feel free uh, in terms of procuring the innovation, as innovation really is something that is not there. And there's, a lot, there's a lot of money that it has to be spent. And if you look at the, the current surrounding the various platforms, you can see the young, the young people that are developing various interesting stuff. And obviously, those people, by any chance, would need some support. So, yeah. I think we should pursue this and see where it goes. Ron, any thoughts? Um, thanks for that support. And it's, it's really great having the support for innovation at this forum. Uh, Lawazi was, uh, was the guy who um, pres provided our sort of innovation. He's unfortunately left us. So <laughs> I'm now the face of, of sort of innovation at the moment. Um, but in terms of the suggestion, we are engaging with National Treasury on a number of levels. Um, we, uh, we're having meetings with them. Uh, the uh, the uh, Director General of the Department of Science and Innovation will be meeting with the Director General of National Treasury. Um, and we have a number of far-reaching recommendations um, in order to ensure that we can innovate. Because at the moment, you know, we understand these rules are brought in to prevent corruption. But at the same time, they have the unintended consequences of also prohibiting innovation. And, uh, and, uh, and on the contrary, we should be having a conducive environment to innovation. And National Treasury, you know, unlike other countries, haven't got that balance right. Thanks uh, for that opportunity. 
Good one. Uh, it would be good to get uh, the provinces starting to engage in that process as well, Sanele. So well done. All right. Let's um, let's see. Any any other comments on on this? Let's um, if not, let's move on. 